What if I told you that you've already seen this video an infinite amount of times, although this time you're wearing a different shirt? Hey, Vixlant here, and by the end of this video, we're going to try and grasp the idea of infinity in our minds. Now, of course, that can't actually be done, because infinity is just too large, and you can always just add one to your idea of infinity. Just as you can't count all the numbers between zero and one, I mean, where would you even start counting? But I'm not just going to start spouting out numbers and decimal places. What I'm proposing is my own fun thought exercise that grasps at the size of infinity. Now, in this exercise, you must assume a few things are possible, just to make it a little bit more simple. First assumption is that the cyclical big crunch theory of the universe is correct, and that is the theory that after the Big Bang happens, atoms form, stars are created, galaxies are born, and then eventually gravity takes over and pulls the whole thing back into a singularity and crunches it together, thus giving way to a new Big Bang, and then the cycle repeats over again. And then we must assume that this happens every time after a finite amount of time. For this exercise, let's just say 100 billion years, given the universe is only 13.82 billion years old, that's not long at all. And the second assumption is that we have a way of tracking and numbering every atom that comes into existence, and that we can compare one atom from one universe to the one before it, and say that they are the same atom. Alright, let's begin. After the Big Bang, atoms begin to form, and as they form, we number them. Gravity kicks in, forming the early stars and eventually lighting up the universe. These stars begin fusing together heavier and heavier elements at their cores, until eventually the star goes supernova. This process continues until trillions of planets, solar systems and galaxies form. At least one of those planets had the perfect conditions in its primordial soup of an environment for incredibly tiny cells to form which, after many years and events, evolved enough to name their home planet Earth, discover fire, spend millions of dollars to go to the moon, and reblog pictures of cats on the internet. All the way up until you, right now, watching this YouTube video. There you go. So for the sake of this exercise, let's call this universe the Prime. So let's assume the Big Crunch happens an infinite amount of times. You can assume that the next time that it happens, the Big Bang would spit out matter, atoms, and energy in lots of different directions than it did the first time. Stars would form in different clusters, galaxies, different clumps of the universe. So much so that if we compare the atoms from this universe to the prime, they would be completely different, and that's to be expected. It would be ridiculous to say that they would be the same, right? Now this is where the thought experiment comes in. As it happens an infinite amount of times, we have an infinite amount of times to observe. So much so that eventually, a Big Bang will spew out atoms, matter, energy in the exact same place that it did in the Prime to begin with. That will then create the same stars, create the same galaxies, all the while leading up to you watching this YouTube video again. Hello. I think we just found another you. Of course that sounds ridiculous, but keep in mind we're talking about infinity here. So let's say a universe capable of creating life on Earth happens once in a Googleplex times. Now, a Googleplex is just 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 100. And to give you an idea of just how big that number is, if we were to grab every particle in our known universe and match it up to a zero in this number, we would run out of particles and still be left with many more zeros. It would actually take space larger than our universe to write down this number. So after a Googleplex amount of Big Bangs, let's just say a universe is created the exact same way as the Prime. Give or take some differences, like I said at the beginning, maybe the atoms that make up you, in this version, decided to put on a different shirt than it did in the last time it formed. Or maybe, I'm wearing a fez, and in that universe, fezes are cool. Or just maybe one pixel in your screen right now is slightly brighter than the last one, and that's the only difference that this cycle had to offer. So if we grab our infinite cycle of big bangs and big crunches, and divide that infinity by a Googleplex just to sift out a universe that is capable of producing life, specifically the ones that lead up to you watching this YouTube video, then we would actually have an infinite amount of occurrences of you watching this YouTube video. And not only you, but those exact atoms in your body watching the exact atoms in my body talk about infinity on the internet. And that's ridiculous, because an infinity 
does not care what you divide it by. An infinity divided by a Googleplex is still infinity. How many Googleplexes are in infinity? An infinite amount of Googleplexes. So, we can continue with this theory, saying that everything that can happen in a 100 billion year life cycle, which is the time that we gave our universes to begin with, will happen. And maybe due to the butterfly effect, just one change in an atom's position early on in the universe could change anything in the future. Maybe leading up to politics that actually work. Mankind creating world peace. We stop fighting over the ground beneath us and we look up and travel across the stars, colonize the Milky Way galaxy. Maybe in that universe, mankind figures out a way to separate itself from its current universe through science and technology, and then seeding itself into the next big crunch that happens. But wait a minute, that next big crunch wouldn't have had life in it, right? So haven't we then just essentially doubled the amount of life that we have just throwing this one idea in there? So that means we can essentially double the amount of universes that have human life in it. An infinity times by two is still an infinity. On top of an infinite amount of universes where nothing much happens, an infinite amount of universes where everything happens, and an infinite amount of universes where it doesn't get so damn hot in Australia during summer. So in this thought experiment, we have divided infinity and still ended up with infinity. We have grabbed that percentage and then times that percentage by two and still ended up with infinity. And thus, we've explored the ideas that some infinities are greater than others in a weird way. Now, of course, this is just my own fun thought experiment. It's just something to think about to try and just have an idea of how big infinity is, instead of me just writing up a bunch of numbers on a chalkboard and saying, well, this sequence goes on forever. This is something that's just fun to think about, that the amount of atoms in the universe in an infinite cycle will occur again. So it's a pretty cool topic. If you wanted to explore more, I recommend checking out the Library of Babel. You can click here to see Michael Stevens explain it a lot better than I can. But basically on that website, it has everything that has been said, everything that will ever be said, and everything that could have been said. It has every ending to every story, even the ones where evil prevailed. Even the ending to this YouTube video that you're watching right now, and the response you're thinking in your head. You can click in the description below to see other cool thought experiments about infinity, and I may do a couple of videos of those in the future. But if this is one of the universes that you enjoyed this video and you subscribed, thank you very much and welcome. If not, like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't though, I'm Bixalent and I will see you next time.